<laughs> go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Well, we just want to take a moment and welcome those who are coming on uh, at this part of our service, social media. I um, hope that you, uh, as you join us, that you will receive from the Word of God. And thank you for being a part of us. Take your Bibles, if you would, and turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. That's a familiar scripture, isn't it? It is. I, mean, I bet you every one of you can quote this scripture. Yes. You know? What does it say? Seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Now you notice that we quoted that wrong. But. But. But is there at first because he's saying uh, that, you know, how the world goes after all the stuff, all the stuff out there. And he says, you don't have to do that. He said, if you seek my kingdom, and my righteousness. He said, I'll, I'll make sure those things are taken care of for you. And uh, so our top, pri top priority, number one, is to seek his kingdom and his righteousness. Hallelujah. His way of doing things, can I put it in that, that, in that simple way? His way of doing. If you seek the way of the king, glory to God. How many of you know that our world has become one Big rat race. That's right. Yeah. Rat race. Head of, head of rat. Right. Amen. I wanted to look up the term rat race. Have you ever have you ever taken something just being in your mind there or else mm -hmm. phrase and you, you go to search it out and find out where it came from? Yes. Rat race. Well the first the first time that the word rat race was used was in nineteen thirty four. And it was, it was used when there were pilots who were testing aircraft. And, and one pilot would take off and the other pilot would, or would do the same maneuvers. Would, rat race would chase after him yeah. to, and testing the airplane to do the certain maneuvers. And it was called a rat race. This follow the leader kind of thing. And so what has happened in our society is that we are in a follow the leader. But unfortunately, it's not the leader of the kingdom of God when it comes to the ways of the world. It's the leader of the world. Or it's the leader of the, of the society in which we live. Now, a lot of people, I want to bring this down in just a moment, because for a lot of people, the leader is Hollywood. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it brings me to the next phrase. Keeping up with the Joneses. Have you ever been there? Mm -hmm. You ever tried to keep up with the Joneses? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me tell you something. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I, I did. It's a miserable place to be to try to keep up with the Joneses. Here's where that term came from, and it was it, it, it was in 1913 uh, where this particular term came from, and it was from a comic strip called Keeping Up with the Joneses. Mm, yeah. It became a popular term by the cartoonist Arthur Momand. Momand, I think they called him. They short, mm -hmm. they called him Dad. But he showed um, in his cartoon strip the lives of the McGinnis family trying to climb the social ladder by keeping up with their neighbors, the Joneses. He says, they, uh, they judged their lifestyle and material goods compared to their neighbors based on the cartoonist on, on, on life now, on life, okay? So what was happening is that everything that the Joneses had, the McKinnises had to get one like it, or we, they had to even try to up a little bit just to try to keep up with the Joneses, okay? We live in a world like that today. Nice. Everybody seems to be chasing after, you know, oh, you, you, you got a boat? Well, I need a bigger boat or a better boat. Or you got a motorcycle? Let me get one, too. You know, that kind of thing. Oh, well, wait a minute. You know, and so we're all chasing after things, okay? Trying to keep up with the Joneses. Now, that wasn't just 1913. That's today. Yes, yeah, amen. Can I, can I tell you? I've never watched one. I've never watched one show, and I'm proud of this 
that I've never watched one show on TV. But we have a show very similar to that today. It's called Keeping Up with the Kardashians. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? It is yeah. true. Everybody sees the Kardashians and they're running around and being being wealthy and doing whatever yes. they want to, marrying 1,500 times. I mean, you know, over and over and over. So it's... You didn't catch that, did you? I caught it. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't know who they are. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. But well, you see, it's, it, it's, that, it's that trying to follow that Hollywood lifestyle. Yeah. Trying to follow that social elite um, group, or they think they're elite anyway, uh, the socially elite group. Um, think about this thing. When you turn on a TV and you go to watch something, who's doing the advertising? Is it the very average guy on the street? No. Nope. No, they put somebody up there, some football player, oh, some okay. movie star, yeah. someone like that, to try to attract you because you want to be like them because in their mind they have oh, succeeded. Yeah. So it's trying to keep up with the Joneses, mm -hmm. trying to do the rat race, everything they do, I got to do. Yeah. Okay? Wow. Now, now, I'm going somewhere with this, okay? I'm going somewhere. Jesus told us not to do that. That's right. He said, the Gentiles seek after those things. Now, the Gentiles at Jesus' time, the non-believers, those who are not following after God, those are the ones who seek after the things of the world, who want to keep up with the Joneses, who follow into the rat race. I got freed from that. About eight years ago. About eight years ago, the Lord said to me, Seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. It took, it, everything flipped. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the material things no longer were important. Mm -hmm. Chasing after those things were no longer important. I didn't care about those things now. It's about his kingdom and about his righteousness. And I want to tell you something. Everything that I've ever needed from that point has come to me without struggle. Amen. Yeah. Without struggle. Yes. Without having to try to figure it out. And but my qualifier, and I don't know who may need to know this, but my qualifier for buying stuff right now is, is can I use it for the advancement of the kingdom of God? Right. Can I use it in the ministry to advance the kingdom of God? You know? So anything that we purchase now has got that on it. Say, it's not about, I, I, I don't care what my neighbor has. I don't care if they have the best, the big boat. I don't care if they got a big, uh, a, a new shiny car. It doesn't matter about that. I don't care what I care about. Did they, you know, they remodel their kitchen? I'm like, no, I got to keep up with this latest from this. No, 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 no. Is it going to advance the kingdom of God? That's the, that's the question we have to ask. Because if it doesn't, advance the kingdom of God. If it's not a tool that can be used, I think it's for all the wrong reasons. For selfish gain. Okay? Now, am I against having material things? No. Because Jesus said that we need those. We need a house. Amen? Yes. Everybody needs shelter. We need food. We need clothing. I'm not against that kind of stuff. But I'm against the philosophy that goes behind going after that stuff. I want to go after the kingdom of God. Mankind, let's see, has become so busy, has so busy, that he has separated himself from his original purpose and plan. Amen. From the original purpose and plan of the Creator. We've forgotten who we were and who we belong to. That's right. And the focus got changed over to the material things of the world. In the Garden of Eden, yeah. did Adam have to go about chasing things? No. no. As long as he walked with God, as long as he did what God told him to do, it was supplied to him. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He didn't have to chase after anything. It was there. What was Adam's original purpose? Take care of what God gave. Take, take care of what God gave. 
and to advance the kingdom of heaven on earth. Okay. 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 So when, when he told him, he said, he said, I give you dominion over all of this. I give you dominion over the birds of the air, over the fish of the sea, over every living thing. I give you dominion over it now. He says, now go and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. It was for the advancement of what God had already established, his kingdom on earth. And that's why Jesus prays in Matthew chapter 6. He tells us how to pray. He says, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So that was the original plan, was the kingdom of heaven being duplicated in the earth. And so that's what he's telling us. He said, the advancement of the kingdom. That's what Adam was placed here for. The advancement of the kingdom. Yes. And that advancement of the kingdom comes through relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Adam walked with the Lord, and, and, and God gave him instruction. Right. Okay. As he gave him instruction, he taught him the things in regards to the kingdom. Adam wasn't born, I don't believe he was born with that absolute full knowledge of things. I believe he spent time with God, and he walked with him, and he showed him how life was to be. How it was in heaven, it's going to be on earth. But Adam, um, Adam rebelled, as we know. Okay. So I talk about getting away from the original plan and purpose. Mankind has done that. That's why all these things in this world have become so important because we moved away from the original purpose, the original intent. Mm -hmm. About eight, eight years ago or so, maybe close to nine now, we, we moved from Colorado to Florida. Mm -hmm. And a couple of years after we had been here, we took a trip to go back to Colorado. Okay, I'm, I'm comparing this with kind of like uh, um, man going back to the original place where he was created to be. When we went left here in the state, from the state of Florida, driving on our way to Colorado, we could not see the original country mm -hmm. at all, or the original state, Mr. Mm -hmm. that way. Okay. But as we drove, the terrain began to change. Yes. Everything from flat land mm -hmm. to hilly land. Mm -hmm. And then it got to the point where, all of a sudden, way out in the horizon, we begin to see mountains. Okay? That's where we originally came from when we came to Florida. Mm -hmm. So it took a long trip to get back to that place. Okay. You see? And the closer we came, the clearer the mountains became. The longer you walk with God, the more you pursue the kingdom, the more you're on this journey, the clearer it will become, the clearer you will be able to see the original purpose Amen. that wow. God put you here for. You get that? Yes, yes, Amen. yes. Amen. So God wants us to know the original purpose. I'm going to say it again. We have moved so far away that we cannot see our original purpose and plan for, wow. of our Creator in life here upon this earth. We've got all kinds of <laughs> religious ideas in regards to the original purpose of man. But what we need to do is we need to have kingdom mindset and kingdom ideas. You see, the whole thing was started in the beginning with kingdom and it will end with kingdom. I want to define kingdom today for you because, but we will a little bit later we can come back and redefine it. What we must have is a return to Eden experience. Return to Eden. If you may, what we must have is a paradigm shift. You know what a paradigm shift is? I very quickly define it, okay? It's an important change that happens when the usual way of thinking about or doing something is replaced by a new or different way. Amen. That's a paradigm shift. How many of you ever heard the term, we've always done it this way? Yeah. We've always done it this way. 
Well, that's the old way of thinking. We've always done it that way. Well, how much success did you have with the old way? That was good, probably good then. But what about the new way? There might be more success with it in that way. Okay? So you've got a shifting over the way that you think. I'm still going somewhere with this, okay? Are you, are you tracking with me? Yeah. All right. You're tracking. Hey, you only got about five minutes to finish up a two-hour sermon. Okay. All right. <laughs> When we do have that paradigm shift, when we do change the way that we think, we can understand what Jesus was saying in Matthew 6.33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Because what he's doing is he's leading us back to the original purpose of mankind. Man was created for kingdom. He was created to be a ruler to have dominion under the king. He was created to be a king under the king. Okay? Ruling over the earth. Let's turn to Luke, Luke chapter 12 for just a moment. I think it's a very important that we read this one here. You got that app on your phone where you, where you can, uh, sounds like pages turning. <laughs> Luke chapter 12, verse 31. Listen to this. This is so beautiful. This is a beautiful portion of scripture. Maybe you can do that early on the sound. <laughs> uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 31. It says, but seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Okay. And all these things, did I say that right? Seek the, Luke says, but seek the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added to you. Huh. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You see, when we discover God's original plan and intent and purpose for his creation, and, and that it includes man in all of this and how we're to work with God, it, and, and he says, it's his good pleasure to return the kingdom to you, to give you the kingdom. Wow. God's not trying to withhold it from you. He gets pleasure in giving it to us. The, the, the word there, pleasure, actually also means delight. He, he delights in giving you the kingdom. Amen. I love it. I love what it says. The, the, new, the, the new Living Translation says it this way. It gives your father great happiness. To give you the kingdom. Or in the CED version, is is he wants to give you the kingdom. And in the CSD, he delights to give you the kingdom. Amen. <sighs> Makes me happy. You ever had a gift you wanted to give to somebody and, you, and you're just all excited about it and you, you're wanting to give it to them? It's going to make you happy when they receive it? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the way God is in regards to the kingdom. He wants to give it to us. But now, let me, let me tell you something. It's just like a, a, a car. I'm not going to give it to you before you're ready for it. We're talking like a child, right? Child, we're not going to give them something they're not ready for. That's right. God's going to bring you to a place and He's going to give you and He's going to show you His kingdom. He's going to take you further into your understanding as you mature in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Right. To give it to you. I, 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 I've seen people some, sometimes have a gift given to them, but they can't use it until they learn how. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it delights him, delights God. It makes him happy. How many of you like to make God happy? Amen. 
Okay, can I tell you how you can make God happy? Receive his kingdom. Amen. Right. That's right, brother. Mm -hmm. Walk in what he wants you to walk in and receive his kingdom. He, he gets happy about that. Glory to God, right? Hallelujah. So God desires to bless you. God wants to bless you. Let's turn to Psalm chapter 84, 11. We're not even going to get close to, to where I wanted to go today. Psalm chapter 84, verse 11. But we'll start. We'll see how far the journey takes us. Sun and shield, and the Lord will give grace and glory, and no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. <coughs> no good thing will he withhold from those who walk, can I say it in this way? In righteousness. Right. Seek first the kingdom of God in his righteousness, he will withhold no good thing from those who walk uprightly. Those who listen to him. You hear what I'm saying? Those who listen to God. Amen. Let's go to verse 2 of that same psalm. There. Verse 2. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh cry out for the living God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me read it again. How lovely is your tabernacle. I'm reading verse 1 as well. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. What's your soul longing for? The courts of the Lord. Now here's the thing in a court. When you go into how many of you have been in a courtroom? One or two of us. I've been in a courtroom. Nothing to be ashamed of. You know, been in a courtroom. And when you when you go into a courtroom, who are you listening to? The judge. The judge. We listen to the judge. We listen to see what he has to say. The attorney may present a case, and others may bring witness, but it's the word of the judge that I'm listening for. So when I come into the courts of the Lord, my soul is longing for the courts of the Lord. What, is, what am I doing? I'm listening to hear what the king or the judge, the just judge, has to say. We were talking about this the other day. I don't want to get off too far. But I'll just hit the little rabbit trail, can I? Okay. We were talking about this the other day, Pat and I about prayer. And, and, and how we come to the Lord in prayer so many times. And we are asking God to do what God has told us to do. Right. Mm -hmm. You ever been mm -hmm. We ask God for everything, but God's told us how to do it. That's right. But we keep saying, God, I want you to do it. Like he's a, we're rubbing the bottle for the genie to pop out. We want God to do it. God said, well, I, I want you to do it. Well, he's the king. <laughs> he's the one in charge. So right. we need to fall into the line of us doing what God Amen. has told us to do. And, and I guess what I'm trying to say into this is listen to what God is saying. Yes. When we come to pray, we need to pray according to His Word and His will and listen to what He instructs us to do and carry out that instruction instead of praying and then standing back and saying, okay, oof, where is it? Yeah. Oof, there it comes. It arrived on my doorstep. Oh, no, 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 no. He's saying, you do. 
I go a little step, a little step further. You know, God, in the in when, before He left, He gave us instruction, didn't He? He yes. said, "You go into the world, yeah, and take the gospel. You go make disciples." Wow. We see, we're always praying for God to send somebody else or God to, to somehow mystically talk to someone and bring them to us and all of this kind of stuff. And God said, no, I told you what to do. I told you. So in the court, I, that, I guess that was a side trip there. But going in the courts, we need to listen to God, what he's saying. Let's go a little bit further with Psalm chapter 84, verse 10. I've heard people say this over and over, and I've said it myself. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Mm -hmm. Kind of metal? Uh, <laughs> Just a moment? Yeah. saying that to the Lord, I would rather what? Hear me again. Okay. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. Where's a doorkeeper? At the door. Right. At the door. Right. Okay. The doorkeeper's at the door. So what I, I'm saying in the midst of this, how many people say, oh Lord, I want to be a doorkeeper in the house of God, but they never come to the house of God. Wow. But God, I want to be a doorkeeper. I'd rather be there than anywhere else. But yet they don't come keep the door. You see, we need people in the church who are readers. We need people standing out there welcoming people as they come in to the, to the house of God. We need Amen. people saying, hey, how, how can I help you today? Would you like a, a bottle of water? Is there anything I can help you do? Can, can I get you a seat? Can I get door help? Uh, you know, a helper right? in the house of the Lord. We let the Holy Spirit take that where he wants to. Glory to God. You see, a court is also where legal matters are taken care of and handled. Courts is where instruction in the law is given. I'm coming into the house of God but to learn of the things of his kingdom, Amen. the legal aspects Amen. of his kingdom, I'm coming to his house to learn how it works. I'm seeking his kingdom, so I'm coming to learn how it works. That's right. Ah, we're going. Courts is a place of justice. Courts is a place of protection. And the citizen of the kingdom who walks uprightly has nothing to fear in the courts. That's why the Lord says we can come before him boldly. Right. Jesus Christ and the relationship that we have with him allows us to have access into the kingdom of God and to the throne room of God. And as long as we are walking uprightly, I have nothing to fear. You, let's just go back to the court illustration again of a judge in this, in this land. Mm -hmm. If I have done nothing wrong, I walk into that courtroom, I have nothing to fear. Right? right? Nothing whatsoever. It's the same way when we come before the Lord. If I'm walking uprightly, living according to the standards of the kingdom of God, living according to his principles, I have nothing to fear. Because then we're walking in love, and perfect love casts out all fear. All right. Amen? All right. So I don't have to fear anything. None of us have to fear anything if we're walking as he tells us to walk. Hallelujah. I want to finish with this. 
Joshua. Joshua. Let's go there, Joshua chapter 1. We're going to go to verse 8. Verse 8. This book of the law uh -huh. shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. This book, this book, he said, so get to Joshua. Yeah. And he said, this book, Joshua, shall you meditate on day and night. And in it, you will have success. And your way will be prosperous. Let's see if I can find it. That's how much of the book Joshua had. Right there. You see how much more we have? Mm -hmm. yeah. That God is giving us to meditate upon. All the lives of the people we get to be able to witness. All the things that we get to be able to read in regards to his kingdom. All the stuff that he's showing us in regards to his kingdom. More than what Joshua had. No, my point is not so much as that. But my point is this. You know why God told Joshua to meditate upon his law? With his word, because then Joshua would know how the kingdom of God functioned. Okay. He would know the heart of the king because he would know the law of the king. You see, the law of, that Joshua was to meditate upon came straight from the heart of the king. Amen. He was so. This is how my kingdom operates. So when we say, well, I'm going to go and meditate upon the Word of God, what we're saying is I'm going to meditate upon the heart of my King. Yeah. I'm going to meditate upon what His desire is, what His will is. Boy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How do we know the will of the King? Meditate upon his word yeah. day and night. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How do we make it like make it like heaven? We meditate upon his word. If I never change anything, or you never change anything, except for your household where you were or in. You've accomplished a major task. You see, that's part of the kingdom of God, that household. It's not mystical out there. It's reality right here. And as I meditate upon the Word of God, day and night, and I learn the heart of my King, I bring those principles into my home. I bring them into my life and I bring them into my home. Now I'm going to say something here very, I want you to listen very carefully. If you are allowing things in your home that are not of God, you need to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. You need to remove them. Yeah. You, you, need, you, you need not play with those things. Right. Remove them. Amen. If you're watching things on TV that you should be watching, you need to, you need Amen. to turn it off. You're listening to things in, on social media that you're not supposed to be. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Because what he's doing is it's feeding your soul rebellion. Yeah. It's feeding your soul the seeds of rebellion that you don't want. Hello. How are you doing? It's feeding your soul the seeds of rebellion. And you don't want seeds of rebellion in your soul. What you want is the word of the king in your heart. Right. So, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. I want my part that I can control right here to be like heaven. 
Amen? It's an important. We're in a season right now. I'll go ahead and say this. And I don't understand how Christians can justify this at all. But we're in a place where we're coming up on one of the most evil holidays in all the world. That's right. It's It's evil. I don't care how you try to explain it. It's evil. It's based on demonic. It's evil. God has no part to do with evil. So if I go out there and I decorate my house up and I say, oh, I got ghosts and I got goblins and I got all of this kind of stuff and, I'm, and, and, and everything into that, I'm participating in the kingdom of darkness. Right. And I'm not going to participate in the kingdom of darkness. Joshua said this in the 24th chapter, I believe it is. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua knew that he could make a difference in his house. And it's up to everyone else to decide whether or not they want to make a difference in their house. Amen. Right. 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 I can't change your house. I can't change what you do in your house. I don't even know what you do in your house. <laughs> Amen? Yes. That's the interesting thing, isn't it? When we close the doors... Nobody knows what's going on the inside except for you and the Lord. That's where that's where the heart comes in. Is my heart right before God? Now I know some of you are in situations where you have other people in in, in your household and stuff like that. But what you know, what would it be like if all of a sudden you just kind of dismissed yourself from that? that was going on. You said, and I've had to do this. I've had to get up and say, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sorry, but I've got to excuse myself because I don't participate in that kind of I haven't done that. I have done that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't participate in that kind of language. Mm -hmm. I don't participate in that. And you dismiss yourself from it. And the witness is there. But you're not going to allow that evil in your heart. Right. Now, if it's in your house, you have every right to be able to click it off. You have every right to be able to get rid of it. That doesn't mean that that person is not going to be upset. They might be upset. They might be. God didn't say they wouldn't be upset. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen? Amen. What do we want in our heart? We asked that question earlier this morning, didn't we? Yes. What do we want? Yeah. If you want the things that God wants. If you truly want the things that God wants, you're not going to get them by doing the way of the world. You have to follow after Him with all your heart. With all your understanding. Follow after Him. Because if we follow after the world and then we ask God to come into our lives and fix things for us, and God to come in and bless us. He said, your heart's not after me. Your heart's just after the things. Right. It's just after the fixing of it. And when the fixing of it is done, you're going to walk away. Oh, amen. How many people have you ever directed and talking to them in regards to the Lord and their life starts getting better and the next thing you know, once it gets a little better, boom, they're off doing the same right. thing again. That's it. Yeah. Where's your heart? Yes, we've got to come back to that one question that we asked. And for those of you who are on social media, that question was asked before our service ever began this morning. What do you want? Do you want the heart of God? Do you want everything that God has for you? Amen. I hope so. I hope so. Jesus said this. <clears throat> he said for us to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now that was when somebody said that, and that's the correct, that's the correct translation. Some of the translations have left off one and said deliver us from evil. Deliver us from the evil one. 
Because there's a kingdom of darkness that's trying to recapture the hearts of the people who have pledged right. allegiance right. to the king of glory, to the kingdom of light. Yeah. And so there is an evil one out there. And the Lord says, but then, as you go to John chapter 17, guess what? He says the same thing when he prays for the disciples. He says, Father, I pray that you do not take them out of this world, but you protect them from the evil one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you see, in the beginning, what happened with Adam and Eve? It was the evil one who came and tempted her, tempted right. them. It was the evil one. It wasn't evil itself that came, but it was the evil one who came to try to get them to live a life different than what God had planned. So if we have the suggestions of the evil one coming into our lives and we're, 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 we're coming into agreement with those, then we're not going to be able to operate and function in the kingdom of God just like Adam and Eve were not able to function and operate in the kingdom of God because we're separating ourselves. You, get, you, you, you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Are you here? Are you tracking with me? Yeah. All right. Good, good deal. I'm going to close this up just one second, okay? Give us this day our daily bread. What is the bread that we need? The Word of God. There you go. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's what we live by. That's what our life is based on, is the Word of God. The Word of God. And the Word of God is not for a suggestion. It's not a really, it's not. The Word of God is the heart of the King Amen. given to us, instructing us on how to live the kingdom life. Right. His burdens are not heavy. They're light. He doesn't place upon us things that are going to burden us and weight us down, but he places upon us things that are going to lift the burden. He says, you take my word, you take my word, and you feed upon my word. Mm -hmm. Feed upon my word, and in it, you will what? Fine. Make your way prosperous and find success. Right. Good success. It's in the Word of God. Amen? I another whole part of this. I have another hour to go on, go on with this, but we're going to cut it, cut it right here today. Uh, and uh, to say, let's start getting the good Word of God into our heart. Let's start meditating upon the Word of God continuously. Let's get that Word in us so that we know how His kingdom functions. And listen to this. I'll give you, give you a little secret. When you get the word of God in your heart, because Jesus says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth now speaks. Right. So when you get the word of God in your heart, and Satan comes along and he tempts you, you know what's going to happen? Whew, the word of God's going to come out. Yeah. Word of God's going to come out. Now, it won't be, won't be the word of the flesh. It won't be the word that you just heard in, in, the, in, the, in your ear. It will be the word of God that will come out. Can I share with you one, one final thing? This morning when I woke up and uh, I started getting dressed and ready to come to church. How many of you ever had that little feeling that comes on you about, oh, you just don't feel good. There's this sickness that wants to come yeah, upon yeah. you and all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just, oh, wow, I don't know. I'm just not feeling well. And I had to stop this morning and said, what does the Word of God say? My body is saying one thing. Mm -hmm. And my body is receiving information from its senses, from its yeah. ear, from its eyes, from its touch, all of these things, it's receiving this information, and I, want, I know that. But see, my body is trying to get my soul to come into agreement with it. My right. body's trying to get my inner man to come into agreement with it. And so my inner man begins to say, you know, you're right. And the next thing you know, it's thrown into full-fledged sickness. But then I had to say, wait a minute, what did the Spirit of God say about that? What did God say Himself about that? And begin to feed from the Spirit side into my inner man so that my body comes into alignment with the Word of God. Amen. Does that make any sense? Yes. yes. Amen. Because
is that speeding your inner man so that when this thing comes upon you, whatever it may be, I just used an illustration of sickness, but when the thing comes upon you, what else happens is from your inner man, your soul, remember 1 John, chapter three, uh, 1 John, it says that your soul prosper. Right. That's true. Your soul prosper. So when your soul prosper, we're talking about meditating upon the Word of God. I get it into my inner man so that what ends up happening is that it begins to proclaim the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Out of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth now speaks. I've got to stop. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right. I hope that you have received something uh, here this morning in, yes. in this. And uh, if you want the, the uh, full version of it, you'll have to come back next week. Okay. Get the full version. We'll be open next week. Okay. <laughs> Glory to God. All right. Father, I thank you so much for your word. Lord, help us to return to the understanding of your original plan and purpose for mankind. Help us to understand, Lord God, what you intended. Not what, not what, not what we think, but Lord, what you absolutely said in your word. What was our original purpose? And so, Lord, I pray that you will show us, as we meditate upon your word, how your kingdom is established and how it will continue to increase in our lives, in our families, and in our communities as we follow after you with our whole heart. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you each.